such a happy day. Joy in my feet, joy in my hands, joy in every way. God took those worldly desires, gave me heavenly fire. Now I got a brand new goal. Since I met this man called Jesus Christ, I got the joy, joy, joy in my soul. Well, thank you for joining me today on A Woman's Joy. This is our week where our dear friend and sister, Sherry McDaniel, with Sisters Fellowship, Women's Fellowship Group there in the First Baptist Church in Canton, Missouri, yeah. is with us. And Sherry comes once a month, and we tape two programs. We have been talking about the biblical meaning of love for many, many, many months. And I don't know that we'll ever end <laughs> up talking about the biblical meaning of love because why? God is love. He doesn't have to invent it, doesn't have to create it. It's there. He is love. And uh, we come to know about that love more and more. We grow closer to him. So it's really important that we understand God is love. The love he has for us. And then that love is what? To work through us that we're to love one another. Amen. The Bible even tells us to love our enemies, to pray for them. Amen. Love is important to God because God is love. Well, I'm excited to have you here with me, Thank Sherry. You, it's always exciting Good to, be here. Um, to have our time together. And yes. we didn't really get to sit in my office today and discuss things, but I know our heart is overflowing mm -hmm. when we hear the word of God. Amen. It brings life. Amen. It brings an excitement. And I pray for you out there that if you're reading words, God, the word of God, oh my goodness, that you're getting excited about it. You can't get enough of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you're not reading the word every day, you need this. This is nourishment for the soul. Amen. This is nourishment for the spirit man in you. And you need this. Just like we eat those three meals and how many <laughs> snacks a day. Dang. We need this word of God, you know. And I like to have the word of God around uh, close because I like to pick it up every once Amen. in a while and read it. Amen. And I'm so thankful that on my Facebook page I have many Christian friends and they sing. They share scriptures mm -hmm. every day with mm -hmm. me, you know. And then it'll bring, oh, wow, that's a, that verse, you know, and how it applies to my mm -hmm. life. Or, you know, I get excited about the word and I know Sherry does too. And so that's why... We enjoy doing these programs together because it's all about the Word of God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And you know, this, before, right before we came on the air, you read, well, I don't want to, what right. do they call it, spoiler alert. This, right, there you go. The scripture verse for today, but talked about the joy. And, and I, I just get, I see that when I come here every time, how the Word excites you mm -hmm. and how it just lights up your face and your light. And, and when we get together, uh, you know, um, I don't know, maybe it's like putting lightning bugs in a jar. The more you get in, the more it lights up. And, mm -hmm. you know, when you were kids, Amen. you would, you would Amen. chase the bugs around and put them in a little jar. And then we would just run around the yard using those. But the more you had in your jar, the more light you had. So that's what God's Word does for us. And it's exciting. And, you, you know, Christians, many times they run around with these frowns yeah. on their face, but we have been given the greatest gift. No matter what's going on in our lives, Donna, we have been given eternal life and salvation and a covenant with God. Mm -hmm. Should not that generate joy for our each and every day of our lives? Amen. Amen. Well, you know, when we get our eyes on Jesus, we're looking up. Uh, yes. yes. But when you are got your eyes on what's going on in your life today and all the problems that come, you know, uh, we get sudden calls that, you know, from our family or something's going on with their grandkids or something changes at work and it'll start pulling us down. See, when we get focused on those things, we're what? We're looking down. We're to focus up on Jesus. Amen. Yeah. And so we want to keep focused on Jesus today. Amen. Amen. And Amen. we can do that. What we're talking about is doing that <coughs> with Excuse all of our me. soul, which is, you know, the seed of our choices. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we'll probably be here a little while on this subject. Amen. <laughs> Amen. For Throughout eternity, <laughs> we're going to deal with God's Amen. love. Amen. Amen. Well, let's go to our scripture for today, as Sherry said, because I'll get 
gone and we'll forget it. <laughs> We're going back in the Old Testament, Zephaniah, right before Haggai. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and it's the third chapter, the 17th verse. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. So if God is your Lord, he's in the midst of you and he is mighty, okay? Mm -hmm. He will save you. He will rejoice over thee with joy. joy. Do you ever think about that? Mm, God's rejoicing over us with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. There it is. Wow. If the creator of all things is rejoicing and has joy over us, if his hand is over us, shouldn't that flow into us and through us and back out of us? Mm -hmm. Wow. What a great day it is. Amen. Because God is rejoicing over us, Donette, and his love is, is coursing through us. And, you know, this is what I want to say about this. It wasn't easy for God either. No. He sacrificed his own son. Yes, he did. But he did so willingly. In the book of Isaiah, it says it pleased him to bruise him. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that he was happy about it, but he did it because of love. Mm -hmm. The immense and unmeasurable love mm -hmm. that he has for us. And so as we get into these definitions about loving the Lord our God with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, then we have only to look into God's word Amen. to see the example of how to love God in return Amen. in that way. Amen. And so God made choice after choice mm -hmm. about us. Actually, you know, there was never even a choice. No. It was just his love. And, you know, that's what we want to aspire to, isn't it, Donette? To get to the place where it's just, I don't know, have you heard the, the old saying, knee-jerk reaction? We don't want to have to think about it. It just is who we are because of God's love inside of each of us. Amen. 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 Of course, for our theme scripture, you want to read mm -hmm. our theme scripture that we've had? From Matthew 22, 37 through 40. And it says, Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. And I just want to stop there for just a second because all means all. Mm -hmm. It means leaving nothing out. And we're going to talk about three different elements or, or mm -hmm. depths of our love. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang, there it is again, yep. all the law and the prophets. Everything, just mm -hmm. as you said in the opening, everything hangs on the love of God. Everything in creation is because of God's love. You know, there are people out there that say, well, I don't believe in God. And they try to find uh, all these different, they have all these theories about how the world was created and how things happen. It happened on that because of God's love. Amen. Had it not been for God's love, none of this. If you go back to the book of Genesis, it said the spirit hovered over the darkness. There was nothing there except when the presence of God entered into, then it became love and light. Everything. Can you imagine the world or life without God? There'd Couldn't be no be. love. Couldn't be. There'd be no love, no peace, no hope, not, I mean, just leave all the evil and the darkness here. Yes. It'd be a land full of sickness, hate, I mean, the worst things we could even think of. That's all it would be, 24-7, 24-7. Well, and to me, that's probably a lot like hell will be mm -hmm. because there's no God there. Absence, yeah. There's no God there. Mm -hmm. And we, I tell you, we take so much for granted in our life. Mm -hmm. But even if, whether we <laughs> call ourselves a child of God or we have denied Christ as our Savior, He still loves us. Amen. It rains on the just and the unjust. Amen. God is no respecter of persons. He still loves you, even though you may have denied Jesus. If you've not received him as your Lord oh, and Savior. He still good. loves you. This is good, good, good. He Amen. still loves you. And he will be here with you during your life here on mm -hmm. earth. Now, when this physical life ends, there is a judgment. 
you will stand before mm-hmm. God. God is love, but God is also wrath. And see, we're living under grace right now. But the day will come when mm-hmm. all of us, now those that have received Jesus as Lord and Savior, we are covered with the blood of Jesus yes, and amen. his righteousness. Amen. So our sins are already forgiven. Our judgment will be different. It will be judged according to what we have done Mm -hmm. with Jesus. What we have done with Jesus in our life. Mm -hmm. The gifts, the talents that God has given Mm -hmm. us that we could be using for God's glory. Mm -hmm. But those that are not covered by the blood of Jesus, they will, the -hmm. wrath of God. Mm -hmm. The wrath of God. And I'm telling you what. I don't even want to think about it. No. Not even for the person that's done the worst things in this world. I, I really don't want them to have to live without God. Jesus himself said it. You know oh. that in Second Peter 3, 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promises, right. but long-suffering, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And he was so not willing that he went to the cross. And, and I'd like to make a point about that. I've been teaching... Um, in our Sunday school class mm-hmm. where we've studied the book of Matthew. And we are actually in chapter 27 right now where Jesus was on the cross. And um, just <clears throat> I've just been studying about that time that everything went dark mm, while Jesus wow. was on the cross. And, and I, I've kind of had a thought that maybe the reason the entire world went dark was because the presence of God had to turn away because his own son was carrying the weight of the sin Mm -hmm. of every single man, woman, child who's ever been born, was born, or ever will be born Mm -hmm. in those six hours. Right. And, you know, we all know what numbers mean. Mm -hmm. And and we know that six is the one less number than seven. Yes. You know, the the completeness and the perfection of God. Um, So there was that thought to me. Anytime God's presence is not in something Mm -hmm. or on something, there's darkness. Right. And darkness represents, as we know many times in the Bible, it's the sin yes. that we have on our lives. And, and what you were tell, sharing with your audience, it's not that we are perfect no. now that we're saved. And like you said, we are covered by the grace of God for yep. those times when we make mistakes and when we stumble or when we fall. But... There is a huge difference between the grace that we live under and and the lifespan that God gives to each person to make that choice. Do we understand? Mm -hmm. I was looking up the other day. 79 years is the average lifespan of a human being at this point. That's about 28,000 days, almost Mm -hmm. 29,000 days. And, And God wants us to choose him first and foremost. Amen. For our God, our King, our Savior, Mm -hmm. and then to live out those days worshiping Him and serving Him. Because Donette, surely He and He alone is worthy for the love that He's graced us with. Amen. Amen. Oh, wow. 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 He is worthy of all honor, all glory, all praise. And, you you know, people say, well, I don't want to do that. And I don't want to <laughs> see that's that's what your mind, your will, and your emotions are all about. Mm-hmm. Uh, your soul making the choice to want to, even when it's hard, so that the result is honor and glory for your Savior, mm-hmm. our Savior. You know, I found in our notes here back in the beginning, it was talking about John the Apostle. He was known as the Apostle of Love. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, yes. And it talks about when he sat. Beside mm. Jesus, he called him my beloved. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yes. Anytime I read that in the yes. Bible, my heart just jumps. Yeah. He understood the biblical love better than most. The Lord used John as the primary human author in his word to define love. Mm. And we know that in the Gospel of John, he talks about love a lot. Yes. First, second, and third John, yes. he talks about it a lot. I'd like to read some of those uh, and ask you to consider 
and ponder on these. And you might even want to write them down and read them again yourself. But John 14, 15. Oh, boy, I remember <laughs> I've read this scripture hundreds of times. And one day I was reading John 14, 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. Wow. And at that time, there was something God was dealing with me about in my heart. And wow, it was like he took a two before and hit me in the head. Mm -hmm. If you love me, it's not that hard. It's very simple. You just do what I ask you to do. How do I know what he's asking me to do? You stay in there the word. Right you read the word. Mm -hmm. You want to know the will of God? Read the word of God. Okay? So I knew. Mm -hmm. I knew what I had to do. And boy, the old flesh <laughs> well, wants it to fight that. Right up, then. But I knew. I knew what I had to do. And so mm -hmm. that's what I did. Mm -hmm. John 14, 21. He who has or obeys my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. Now, I'm not saying this. This is what God's saying to me, to Sherry, and to all of you. Amen. Mm -hmm. If you obey his commandments and keep them, then you are the one that loves him. And he who loves me will be loved by my father. I will love him and manifest myself to wow. him. Wow. Family. Blood. Family. For eternity. Mm -hmm. Nothing. He says one thing, nothing can take you from my hand. Nothing. We're family. Wow. You know, I love John 14, 21, but there, just like John 14, there's an if. Mm -hmm. John 14, 21 has one also. He who keeps, or he who has my commandments, that's has, having the word of God mm -hmm. and knowing it, Donna. Mm -hmm. There's a responsibility there. And keeps them. The word keep, I... I come back to this mm -hmm. over and over and over it means to to store mm -hmm. to deposit mm -hmm. to hold on to to save to conserve reserve retain possession continue or cause to continue along or on a positive course that's choice this is choice um, God is never going to make us do no. it although he could Oh, yeah. When he created us, he didn't want robots. No. That's why he gave us free will. Just, and, you know, we talk about this love-hate relationship that we have with free will. But God loves us so much, Donna, mm -hmm. that he wants us to choose mm -hmm. to love him in return. And once you experience that love... Mm -hmm. My response, and, you know, I, I know others have made the same. How could you not? Mm -hmm. How could you not knowing and touching mm -hmm. what God actually did for all of us? Mm -hmm. If, you know, my, my pastor always tells us to look for the small words in the mm -hmm. Bible. Goodness gracious, in the book of John, and as you said, 1st, <laughs> 2nd, 3rd John, there's a lot of ifs. But those are conditional covenant words. If you love me, then do this. If you love me, I'll do this. You know, um, we're never going to outgive God. No, never. And he says, if you love me by choice, you are my child, and my love is for you. He says, come in and dine with me, and I'll be with you. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness, Donette. The promises, we could just sit here and go on and on and mm -hmm. on about the promises for his beloved, mm -hmm. his children. Mm -hmm. You know, we talk about it being choice, and uh, it is a choice. And we've got to get that. We have to deal with it. We've got to get it in yes. here, and we've got to get it in mm -hmm. our heart. Mm -hmm. It's a choice. But I think about the Israelites. <laughs> now, the Bible says mm -hmm. that they are his chosen people. Mm -hmm. And if you read the Old Testament, <laughs> and even up through today, the Israelites are still his chosen people. Yes. Are they all saved and call upon Jesus as Lord and Savior? No. But see, they have that free choice also. Mm -hmm. You think about when they were under Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. They were in slavery. They had no choice. He was forcing them to work, forcing them to serve him, to bow down. You know, that is slavery. And they cried out to God mm -hmm. to set them free. So God finally set them free. Mm -hmm. And oh boy, how happy they were 
you know, until they got to the Red Sea. And then, oh, no, why would you bring us out here to let us die <laughs> on the desert? Here comes God again. Did his love stop? No. God's love never changed. Never changed for them. He parted the Red Sea. What a miraculous thing that had to be to see. They got on the other side, and it wasn't long. They were murmuring and complaining again. And what were they doing? They were making idols. Mm -hmm. They turned from God again. Did he forsake them? No. He gave them manna to eat. He mm -hmm. gave them quail one time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah, Donette, I was, never forsake. I was thinking about our kids, or our grandkids yeah. now, because we have grandchildren and our children yeah. are grown up but did you ever count to your kids when I get to three <laughs> but you know I can't imagine what number God's on in his <laughs> grace with us even just me in my life take one day mm -hmm. and and just challenge your obedience mm -hmm. you know I have this one article that we read and it says how to love God with all your soul and there's three yep. points to this love the Lord your God with all your soul by making godly choices love the Lord your God with all your soul by pursuing obedience yep. to his word love the Lord your God with all your soul by pursuing a life of humility and attitudes and speech pursuing, seeking, chasing after those things with the intent. Pursuit means to chase after with the intent to catch, to grab hold of, and take possession of. You know, are we in pursuit of those things? Because God surely has not run out of numbers mm -hmm. for, to count me down when I, when I make a mistake. He says, I forgive you. Mm -hmm. And immediately when we repent or when we come to him and give him our lives, we're restored mm -hmm. because of love. Mm -hmm. And then that same love covers me all the days of my life. It covers you all the days of mm -hmm. your life. There are 7.2 billion of us on the planet today. Mm -hmm. And that same love, God has enough and more than enough for every person that he ever created. And John, he wanted to be with Jesus. Yes. He was right there. He wanted to sit by him at the table. He was right there mm -hmm. because he loved him with wow. all of his heart. He's a good all example. Of his soul. He's a great example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A great example. And then he went on to talk about this love, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and again, <laughs> almost every time he talked about if we love the Lord, mm -hmm. we keep his commandments. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. Amen. By this we know that we are in him. First John 2, 5. I would challenge you to read the Gospel of John and 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John again. I'll tell you, you'll be blessed because it's all about love. And if you're not excited, getting excited about <laughs> God, by the time you get done reading that, I don't know. I don't know. Read it again. Yeah, and read it reading. again. Yes. Amen. Keep reading it because the Holy Spirit will touch your heart. Amen. Amen. He will touch your heart through that word. Amen. Uh, and it may be doing a work in here that you don't even realize it's doing. Amen. You know, the work starts on the inside. Yes. And then we'll eventually yes. we see it on the outside. Yes. Amen. Amen. So I, I just. Um, Can I read this bottom yes. verse? It's Second John 1, 6. Mm. This is love. Mm -hmm. This is love that we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment that as you have heard from the beginning, you walk no. in it. It's the same love. Same God love. has not changed his love. No. I mean, people, you know, have you heard the term that people use more these days? Mm -hmm. People fall in and out of love. God has never fallen out of love with us. Mm -mm. But he wants us to choose to walk according to this word. This word is a living, right, breathing yes. example. This is everything God said to us, for us, and about us. Mm -hmm. Examples of his love. And God wants us to choose mm -hmm. that, to reciprocate and walk in that love. And oh my goodness, you know, statistics tell us, I'm not a numbers person, but they are a way to measure things. Mm -hmm. And statistics tell us that there are like two 
point something billion plus Christians in today's world. People being saved every day. But can you imagine how many more might be saved if we walk this out from the time our feet hit the floor until the time we return back to our beds that evening? Mm -hmm. You know, when on the day of Pentecost, when they were all, the, the Bible says, when they were all in unity yes. and all in one, mm -hmm. then the Spirit fell and 4,000 were saved and 5,000 were saved. Wow, goodness my. The difference, the eternal difference that could be made in the kingdom of God if only him, his people, all of us, would walk according to his commandment. And his commandment is to love. To love. To love. To love. You know, uh, we only have a couple minutes left, but we have a first Thursday prayer here at the mm -hmm. studio. And when we first start out praying, we go around the table, each one prays for different things that are on our prayer letter. People call in with prayer requests or uh, people might stop by the station or in the station and ask us to pray for someone. And as we start out in prayer, but by the time we get around the table, mm. who? Yes. That presence of God is getting closer and stronger mm -hmm. and stronger and more at rest. Mm -hmm. That being in His presence brings great love to Amen. you. I'm telling you, you just it feel that soul. joy that yeah, He's talking about. You is. feel that joy. At the time you get around here, you don't want to leave. You just want to sit a while yeah. and sit in His presence. And God loved the world. Put your name in there. God loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And I like to add the next verse. For God sent his son not into the world to yes, condemn it, yes. but that the world through him would be saved. He has always looked at you through eyes of love. Always. His love will never change for you. Yes, you are the one that needs to make the choice. Are you going to love him with all of your heart, soul, mind, strength? Or are you going to deny him mm. and spend life and eternity Amen. without him? Amen. That's your choice. He freely gives that because he is love. I want to thank Sherry for being here. We're thank going to continue you. next week talking about the biblical meaning of love. I hope you will join us. Go out and tell somebody about Jesus today. God bless. Have joy in your heart today. Ask Jesus in, okay? One day I was walking in a world of sin. No rest for my weary soul. Then I met a man, said he'd be my friend. All my burdens he did roll. He took those worldly desires, gave me heavenly fire. Now I got a brand new goal. Since I met this man called Jesus Christ, I got the joy, joy, joy. you to a very special event. Uh, this year, 2018, will be Kingsway Fellowship International's 50th World Convention, World Conference. It's our Jubilee year, uh, and we're going to be uh, holding that at the airport uh, Holiday Inn in Des Moines, Iowa.